Got a request for a uh, tutorial on some of the basic uh, pocketing and profiling operations in Bobcad. <laughs> so I'm going to just go ahead and start this one with the, the uh, very basics. Uh, the individual specified a stock thickness but not a stock size. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just arbitrarily pick, uh, say, 6 by 10 as a stock size. So enter 10 for X, 6 for Y. Uh, I'm, I habitually work in the, uh, the upper right quadrant, so I'll pick with respect bottom left for the uh, origin on this. And um, as you see, that puts it in the upper right. I like that, so I'll click OK. The reason that, uh, that I put this rectangle around is basically to help out with the stock wizard. Uh, the stock wizard can be pretty complicated. Uh, it's just a lot easier to work with if you give it a, a bounding box and tell it, you know, define your stock according to this. So I want to go to the cam tree, go to milling stock and right click, and the first option to pick is stock wizard. All right, it defaults to rectangular, which is what I've got. I like that, so I'll uh, just click on the arrows to go to the next thing. And here you see it's it's defined the uh, the stock in X and Y according to that rectangle. Now it does default in my case to to one inch because that's what I put in the settings. If you want to change that, and in this case I do, you just go down here and click on Enter, and you're able to change the X, Y, and Z. I don't want to change X and Y, but Z will change to three eighths of an inch and that's uh, the stock that uh, the individual specified. Click OK and you see that the stock shortens right up and uh, we've got the stock that we want to have. Go back to a top view. Alright, the, uh, the geometry that they wanted to put in was uh, a donut basically. Uh, a circle with the inside cut out and the outside profiled to, to uh, just give them a, a, a donut. So we'll start with arcs, and I'm just going to put in coordinates here. And for starters, oh, well, let me cancel that real quickly. I'm, I'm in the habit of leaving the stock visible. I'm going to go back to the cam tree and right click on milling stock again. You have some options. You can blank it, which is just turn it off. I don't really need to see it. I know it's there. You can also, by right clicking again, unblank. And you can change the transparency, which I generally like to keep a pretty high transparency so that I can see my geometry a little bit better. Uh, another thing to note is if you, uh, if you find it difficult to see any particular thing in Bobcad, you can change the color of it almost always. Uh, the tool paths, you name it, you go up to preferences and settings default. And you get to change the colors of all kinds of things in here. Um, I, I'm not going to change a lot of things around. But just for general drawing, down here in the bottom right, there's a little window, which is current colors. Uh, you can It's set to a dark blue in this case for mine, but it can just as easily be a bright red. Um, let me just quickly sketch a circle so that you can see that it's showing up as bright red. The reason I don't uh, normally choose that particular color is that uh, that's also what I've set up as my select color. But I just wanted to show it just for you know, accessibility reasons. If you have a hard time seeing any particular thing in Bobcad, it's very easy to change the default colors. So let me select that and get rid of it. You can see that you know it's selected and highlighted, but it hasn't even changed color. That's why I don't use bright red. Uh, but going back to where we were, go to arcs and coordinates. Uh, I'm going to set these circles up for x2 and y2 just so that it'll be out in the open there. And the inner circle was a radius, or excuse me, a, a diameter of 0 0.83. It's what, 7 eighths plus a little bit. Um, one thing that uh, people fairly often miss out on is that all of the numerical entry boxes in Bobcad are calculators. So if I want to go half of 0 0.83, I go 
equals 0 0.83 slash 2 or 3, 0 0.83 over 2. Hit enter and it'll automatically do 0 0.415. sure exactly why that happened but uh, anyway 0 0.415 I'll click it and there's my inner circle the, the outer circle was what one and a quarter 1.25 so 0 0.625 for that one click OK and there we go we got my inner circle and the outer circle we want to use a pocketing feature to cut out all the material on the inside of this circle and a profiling feature to cut the uh, the entire circle out. And we'll get to that coming right up. Okay, so for our pocketing feature, uh, well, first of all, I'm going to relocate the, uh, the geometry to someplace a little over toward the edge rather than out in the open the way I've got it there. <clears throat> first thing I want to do is... Uh, decide how I'm going to move it. There's lots of ways. Um, I'm going to use the translate function is where you do all your movement. I'm going to use the sketch and enter um, function within translate. And to do that I'm going to need a point where I want to move it to. So I'll go to points and coordinates and we'll enter one inch in X one inch in Y and drop a point there. All right, the the sketch enter, the way it works is you'll select your geometry, select a point on the geometry, and then select a point that you want to move that to. And the uh, point that you select on the geometry will move to your selection point. <coughs> then we use snap points to uh, get the, the uh, center of one of these circles. The way you get snap points in Bobcad, well, first of all, let me select the geometry that I want to move click OK or hit the space bar. Uh, to get a snap point in Bobcad you hold down the shift key and then click on a piece of geometry and if it's a line you'll get a point at the one end and the other end and then in the center. In a circle you get a number of uh, snap points on various radians and you get a uh, an arc center point. That's the one I want to move. So I'll click it and then I'll click the point that I want it to move to and there we go. All of this uh, in the lower left, you'll get uh, prompts telling you, you know, basically they'll walk you right through the process. Uh, if you ever find yourself lost and a function is just not working the way you think it should work, quite often if you'll look down in the lower left, you'll and just follow the directions <coughs> step by step. They'll take you right through it. Um, also, although it didn't say uh, very often, you, know, you want to put multiple pieces out of uh, one piece of stock. So we'll just go ahead and make a few extra ones. Uh, first thing I want to do is select my point and get rid of it because that's the last time we'll be using it. Uh, we'll use translate function again. Uh, this time we'll use the delta feature. Uh, in delta you just enter values that you want it to move along. In this case we'll say 1.5 in the um, y direction. And we'll make two copies. That'll give us three separate uh, pieces that we'll be doing our work on. So I select the uh, piece, confirm it with the space bar, click OK. And then once this is all set up, click OK. And you see it generates not one but two copies with a spacing of 1.5 in the Y direction. If you want to fill the uh, piece with it, you would click reselect, you'd select the entire column of pieces you just set up and then you would change to say an X 1.5. Oh I did not confirm these so I'll click uh, the space bar to confirm them and then when I click OK you know, I'll start getting a, a full grid. I won't do all of these but uh, that's, that's the quick and easy way to fill up your stock with parts when you want to cut uh, multiples. I'll just use undo to get rid of those. All right, so we've got three parts. Uh, we're going to be using two features on these. We'll do a pocket, 
which will be cutting out all the stock on the inside of the inner circles and then we'll do a profile which will cut the outsides of the uh, the outer circle so to start with we'll go to the cam tree go to milling stock and you can just left click on or excuse me right click on milling stock and go to mill two axis it'll set the uh, feature underneath or within the uh, machine setup one so you can also click there same thing and pick mill two axis and we'll pick pocketing okay click next the next screen it says to select geometry so you click on select geometry and pick the geometry that you want to uh, set a pocket on. In this case, all three of the uh, innermost circles. <clears throat> Once you've got those uh, highlighted, hit the space bar, click OK, and you'll get a, a preview box showing them. Uh, if you've got a big grid and you miss one, this is a nice way of reminding you, you know, hey, you, you skipped over this part. Uh, or, you know, anytime you're selecting geometry, it's nice to have a preview box. Anyway, we've got our three circles there, so we'll click Next. Uh, this screen, your rapid plane is tenth of an inch above uh, stock. Your feed plane is a tenth of an inch above stock. If you have, for instance, uh, some clamps or some you know bolts or something, the heads of them rise above a tenth of an inch. You might want to increase that value so that when your tool is rapiding back and forth doing the various operations, it doesn't crash into anything. Um, in my case, I tend to never really have anything sticking up past a tenth of an inch, so I rarely change the uh, the default values there. But those are good. Not going to be using a chamfer, so we'll click next. I'm not going to be using any odd uh, different work offsets, no rotary angles or anything. So we'll click next again, and that brings us to our tool selection. Uh, in this case, I want a quarter inch uh, single fluid end mill, which I don't have in the default. I've got the tool crib though set up with every tool that I own. So in here, in roughing, there's a quarter inch flat end mill, single flute. I like that. Click OK. And that sets me up with that tool. I generally change feeds and speeds a lot for various materials, so I'm, I just manually enter them every time that, uh, that I do a, uh, a feature. Um, in this case, I'm just you know setting up some what I would use for most hardwoods, uh, softer hardwoods at least. 16 inches per minute uh, feed rate and a 30 inch per minute plunge. So with that set up, click next again. And you've got four different choices of pocketing style. Uh, zigzag, and it gives you a little visual to show you know uh, more or less what it's going to do. Zigzag just moves back and forth to uh, clear the area. Offset pocket in. Would, in this case, it would uh, go around the inner part of the uh, circle, or the outer part of the innermost circle. So it would go around here. Then it would step in and start clearing out more. Now, in this particular case, I'm going to be cutting all the way through the stock, so I don't want to, uh, on the second pass, cut out and leave a plug of wood or whatever material, in this case, rattling around down there and getting trapped and causing things to get chewed up. So what I actually want to use is offset pocket out and it starts in the center and works its way toward the outside of the uh, pocket area. Um, advanced pocket is a really nice feature but it's fairly complex and I'm not going to really talk about it this time. Uh, th there are some times when it'll come in really handy. It can really speed up pocketing in large areas especially or irregular areas. But we're going to go with outside pocket or offset pocket out in this case, we'll stick with a climb mill um, as opposed to conventional cutting and a 50% of the tool step over, so it's going to step over an eighth. Um, oh, that's good. I'll click next. In this case, I want to do a roughing cut and then a finishing cut. So I'm going to leave five hundredths of an inch of material along the inside uh, boundary of this pocket when I do the roughing cut and then come in with a finish cut and take that all off in one nice uh, slow smooth cutting operation. So five hundredths of an inch uh, left with my side allowance. Bottom allowance I'm not going to worry about in this case. My total depth is going to be three-eighths of an inch 
and I want to do it in multiple steps. Um, I was given a depth of cut constraint of a quarter of an inch. And although it didn't say, I, I've just assumed that these are to be cut out of the uh, stock completely. So in this case, I don't want to exceed a quarter of an inch depth of cut. Um, the 3 eighths divided by 2 uh, would give you, what, 3 sixteenths. When I click multiple steps, it defaults to two passes. You can set it up for any number of passes. You can uh, say I wanted to make uh, oh, five passes to do this. So, you know, I'm cutting aluminum or something harder. All you have to do is that uh, your depth of cut here, type in your stock thickness divided by number of passes. In this case, say I wanted to make five passes. And then uh, if you hit enter, uh, a minute ago, I, I made a uh, just hit enter and it did, uh, popped a piece of geometry up that I wasn't uh, wanting. Better than hitting the enter key is to just click on any other field and it'll perform the calculation in the field you just uh, type the little equation in. So if I click up here, 3 eighths divided by 5 is uh, what, 75 thousandths. And it shows you the number of cuts there. But uh, in this case, I just want two passes. So 3 sixteenths of an inch is what I wind up with. Um, even depths, multiple steps, okay. And that'll go all the way to the bottom of the stock, so it'll cut a hole clear through the stock. Go click Next. Uh, it'll be a plunge entry. It won't ramp in or spiral in. There's really no need in this point. Uh, sometimes you do want a different entry. Uh, it can, like if the wood is really prone to tear out, that sort of thing, you might want to do, uh, do a more gentle entry than just plunging straight down. Um, but we're good with plunge on this one. I'll click next. And this screen only comes up when you've got multiple pieces of geometry selected. And it's, it's basically sorting. You know, if you want to just work your way in the X direction or work your way in the Y direction or don't sort it all and just let it take care of itself. Uh, in this case, I'll pick closest. And the start position, basically what corner would you like it to start in? So it's going to start down here close to the origin and it'll just do this one, then this one, then this one. Uh, generally, you can just leave these alone and it'll give you just about the most efficient uh, way to cut these out. Uh, there, you know, of course, everybody's got different cuts all the time, so quite often you, you will want to change them, but uh, generally you can leave it alone and you'll be fine. So with that set up, click Next again and we'll go to our finishing tool path. Uh, it carried the tool over in this case, so I've still got my quarter inch flat end mill. And uh, the finishing tool path will not be a stepped cut. It'll go all the way to the bottom and it'll use the sides of the flutes to, to uh, mill that uh, 5 hundredths off. I do want to change my feeds and speeds to, oh, we'll say 24 inches per minute. You want to go fairly slow with a finishing cut. Give it 24 inches per minute plunge. Our uh, compensation is not going to really come into play on this. It's more often on a uh, profile cut you'll want to mess with compensation than uh, with a, a, a pocketing cut. You can almost always leave these alone uh, for a pocket and you'll be fine. We'll take a plunge entry, vertical plunge, vertical uh, lead out. That's all good. Basically the tool is just going to go you know, straight down into the hole, do its operation, then come straight up out of the hole. And that will finish up the pocketing operation. So want to tilt this up a little bit and we'll take a look at our tool paths. So just to make sure I've got my geometry right, I'll click on my geometry, click reselect, and it'll highlight what it thinks is the geometry I've set up for this. In this case, it's all correct. Hit the space bar, click OK to confirm that. And then go down here to pocket, right click, and tell it to compute toolpath. Okay, so we've got two different parts of to these toolpaths. Let me come to a top view. You see that there's three concentric circles here. The innermost two are the roughing paths, and they're actually in two levels. When you get a little tilt on it, you can see it will come down, it'll cut the inner circle out, it'll go to the second circle, cut it out, then it'll step over, plunge all the way down, 
cut the inner circle out, cut the secondary circle out. This will give you a hole all the way through the stock, but it'll still leave five hundredths on the, uh, the edges. The outermost circle of the tool path here, that's the finishing cut, and it'll come along and clean up that five hundredths. Again, it'll go all the way to the bottom. Uh, hopefully you can see this. Uh, here's the outer part of your top roughing cut. Here's the outer part of your bottom roughing cut. And then over here is your finishing cut. There, there's only one of those because it's, it's going to be milling off you know, the tool marks left by the roughing passes. And it'll be <coughs> excuse me less prone to splinteriness and just general rough appearance. It'll make a nicer cut. So that looks good. I'm um, going to go ahead and set up the profiling operation around the outside next. Alright, so our next feature will be the profile, and once again we'll go to Machine Setup or Milling Stock, right click it, and pick Mill 2 Axis. Uh, and this time, instead of pocketing, we'll pick Profiling, which is the first choice, and it comes highlighted first anyway. Click Next, and again we're taken to the Select Geometry page. Click on Select Geometry, and for the profile it'll be the outermost circles. Once you've got them selected, click OK or hit the spacebar to confirm. Again, you have a preview for your geometry. Click Next. You have your rapid plane, feed plane, if you uh, want or need to change those. Uh, occasionally, top of part will need to be something you change, but uh, that's, that's for another uh, video. So with the rapid and feed plane set up, click Next. Our work offset and rotary angle we don't need to worry about. Um, <clears throat> anytime you have a lot of arcs in a, uh, in a uh, job, especially uh, something that you're doing like 3D carving that's going to be a very large file, go ahead and click Arc Moves because uh, instead of doing a lot of little lines to go around a curve, it'll actually just define a center point and say run an arc around this at specified distance. Basically it saves a lot of, uh, of lines of G-code which for, say, a 3D carving uh, uh, profiling cut, uh, you, you can save yourself a lot of lines of code and be nice to your computer that way. So arc moves, you know, there, there's plenty of times and places with a router that you're going to want to use that. So click Next, and uh, once again I want to go to my tool crib and pick my quarter inch flat end mill. That's pretty much a go-to bit. You use that a whole lot on a router. And once again, we'll crank the uh, feeds and speeds up 60 inches per minute. Feed and 30 inches per minute plunge will work fine for this. Click Next. Now in this case, um, depending on how your, your uh, geometry is selected, depending on whether you want a climb or conventional cut, you may need to be on one side of the uh, line or the other. Uh, in this case, I'm going to pick right compensation, which will put the uh, tool, basically it'll put the geometry line that the tool is following on its left hand if it's facing in the direction of cut, as, as you see here. Uh, that'll the line us up here. If you find your tool is on the inside of a profile when you want it to be on the outside, you've got a couple of options, but the, one of the easiest ones is to just simply change your compensation from left to right. Uh, with zero compensation, your tool will follow right on the line. It's essentially the same thing as an engrave, but you can you have some different options uh, since it's a profile cut. But we'll leave that on right. Don't worry about machine compensation. That's that's really more for uh, specialized controllers on machine tools uh, than than your average router running Mach three. Uh, that's all on that page. So we'll click next. Again, we want to do a uh, roughing and finishing cut, and so I do want a side allowance, and we'll say five or excuse me, five hundredths. Don't want to worry about the bottom allowance. Uh, my stock, the total depth is three eighths, zero point three seven five, and again, I do want to do it in multiple steps. The default is number of cuts in uh, in a multiple step path is two, and that's what I want this time. But uh, if you, you know, again, if you want a different uh, number of cuts, you can just simply enter your total depth divided by number of cuts as an equation here. 
click on another box and it'll do the math for you and it'll you know set up five cuts or seven cuts however many you need but in this case uh, 3 16 cut is, is within spec for the uh, depth cut that I was specified for this job and that should be no problem um, even depths all right we're good to go uh, hit next um, Again, I just want a uh, vertical plunging entry and uh, lead out, so this page is fine. You can change it to a ramping entry where it did, well, it has a visual aid here. It'll slowly work its way down a slanted path. Uh, it's not really often necessary in uh, in woodworking or or plastic or most of the things you're going to put on a router. Sometimes you'll want a ramping cut, but not very often. Click next. Um, if this were anything but circles, I would be a little bit more concerned with whether it has sharper round corners or some of these various things are, are uh, oh, the tool might, for instance, given the diameter of the tool or various things, if you're cutting it inside, it might try to loop out and you control it by, by picking some of these other uh, options for corners. But they're not going to be of any interest to us doing a couple of circle cuts. So we'll click next again sort order once again we'll just take closest and start nearest the origin here and uh, and it'll do a fine job of, uh, of cutting efficiently click next again and that page wouldn't show up if we were just doing one by the way it's only because there's multiple pieces of geometry selected uh, we're down to our finish cut uh, this that's an eighth of an inch diameter so that's not the one I want I want the uh, quarter inch tool that's already in the collet. Highlight that one, click OK. So there's my quarter inch flat end mill single flute all set up. I do want to change feeds and speeds. Say 24 inches per minute feed and 24 for plunge. And that's all that we have to enter for this one. So we'll finish it. Tilt this so we can see the tool paths a little bit better. Uh, I will reselect my geometry. All three of them are highlighted, so I'm good there. Click the space bar, or hit the space bar, and click OK. We'll also confirm your selection. And then go down to Profile, just below Geometry. Right-click, tell it to compute the toolpath. And here again, you have... Basically, it's it's a mirrored version of what happened on the inside. You have a roughing tool path that is in two layers, and it's on the outside. It's away from the line. It's going to leave five hundredths of material next to the uh, geometry. The finishing tool path will go all the way to the bottom, and then basically side mill the uh, the uh, stock to the finished dimensions. All that looks good, so the next thing we want to do is go up to milling stock, right click, and go down to our simulation to get a look at what this cut's going to look like in real time. So we click simulation. Uh, I usually set it for material mode. Uh, these buttons are all very configurable and yours may not be in the same place, but uh, it's very much worthwhile to, to look around and, and uh, check out the uh, the names of the buttons they generally will they'll give you an idea of what they do just by hovering the mouse button over it but I put it in material mode just to basically get rid of the uh, tool path lines there so that i can really see it as if it were on the uh, machine and being cut now i'll move it over here to get a little bit better view okay and i'm gonna slow it down a little bit because it's fairly basic operations and it'll go pretty fast so it's going to start by doing the pockets you can see that it's going all the way through the material here it'll do roughing pass on this one roughing pass on the next one roughing pass on the next one and finish will come later in fact I think it usually says finish until last when these are chained features like this So all three holes roughed through the stock. Now it is doing the finishing now before it moves on to profile. So they're now being finished right up to 0 0.83 diameter. And then it'll come outside and cut the, uh, the parts. And 
this is why you do simulation. You can see right off the bat that I've uh, put these two close together and that this one is going to have, uh, well, both of those two, all three of them, will have collisions. See, that's undesirable. So I should have spaced these at about oh, 1.75. Uh, I can go ahead and stop the simulation at any time, click the X, and let me go to a top view and I can very quickly change that. I'll go to the translate. I'll click copy off. I'll use the uh, delta feature and I'll just instead of 1.5 I'll go to 2 so I just want to move both of these that's X, I don't want X, I want Y half an inch. So 0 0.5 inches positive Y. Those are there. I'll click OK to confirm them. Click OK here. They both move up. Now I'll click reselect and just take this top piece of geometry. Click OK. And then click OK here. And now I've got enough separation that that's not going to happen again. The one thing you do see is that my tool paths are back here where I left them. But that's an easy fix. I'll go to my pockets. Bring this up so I can see a little better. Reselect my geometry. You see it hung on to the geometry even though I've moved it. It knows that these are the, the exact same ones that I had highlighted before. They've just moved a little bit. So that's no problem. Hit the space bar, click OK. Go to pocket, right click and tell it to compute toolpath and you see that the pocketing toolpaths have now moved. I'll do the uh, same with the profiles. Reselect to make sure my geometry is in order. It is. Click OK or hit the space bar. Go to profile, right click, tell it to compute toolpath and now you see that the toolpaths are all lined up. So now we can go back to the simulation And I'll leave the speed a little bit higher there. Let me move this. And okay, so it's doing the finishing cuts in the pockets now. And there's enough separation that, uh, yeah, they'll have no problems with uh, interference with the different parts. Now there is one other thing that I want to bring up. There's no good way to hold these without having basically specialty clamps. Um, so cutting these loose right here, that part becomes loose in the hole and starts rattling around. At best you leave a little basically a, uh, a raised boss right there and it just bumps out of the way but the finishing path can't even be run because the pieces will be loose. So how do we address that? Uh, there are essentially two ways. Double-sided tape is out. It won't hold to these with uh, the side forces that are be will be coming in from the tool. You could have a circular plug with a hole in it and screw down to the table, but that's pretty bulky and tears up your spoil board. My preferred way to do this in this case would be to actually not cut all the way through the uh, stock on the finishing pass. I would leave say two to three hundredths of material on there. Two or three hundredths of an inch of wood, if you hold it up to the light you can see through it. If you press on it, it will you know wiggle up and down and you'll see the outline of the uh, piece. You can take an X-Acto knife or a Stanley knife and just cut right through it and then sand it off really easily with just a handheld sanding block. Um, but it's enough to hold the piece in place and let you do all, do all your machining. So to fix that, again, we'll get out of the simulator because anything you enter in here, you can't just restart the simulation. Simulation loaded up from the prior toolpath. So I turn that off and I'll go back to my profile feature, come down to profile, right click it and click edit. Now where I put in the uh, the, the uh, stock depth, depth of cut, was under the parameters tab here. 
So what I'll do is instead of 0 0.375 total depth, we'll go 0 0.345, and that'll leave three hundredths of an inch of uh, stock down there. We also won't want to change our depth of cut, but you notice when I just clicked in this uh, window, it saw that, calculated the change, and now two cuts is 0 0.1725 instead of 1875. So basically it was smart enough to just pick up instantly on the uh, the uh, change in the stock thickness that I'm specifying. So now I can, I've got a compute button here, I can just tell it to compute. Alright, it does it, it's not enough for, for you to really even see here. But when we go back to the simulation, go to milling stock, right click, click simulation. Go to material mode. Mm -hmm. Alright, and I'll speed this up because you've seen it all before. There's the roughing and finishing. Okay, so it did all the uh, roughing and finishing on the pockets. It did the roughing and finishing on the uh, profile, but, and you can't really tell how thick it is on this stock, but believe me, and if you had a piece of oak and you had this done, you could pick this up off the table, hold it up to the light, and see light coming right through this thin piece of wood here. Very easy to cut out. Uh, it does hold on to everything, assuming that your stock is flat. Um, now, if your stock is not flat, you'll want to very carefully locate and put a screw or something into the middle to pull it flat. Otherwise, let's say if it's bowed up in the middle and you're cutting a whole grid of parts out of the stock, the ones in the middle will probably rise high enough that they'll be cut out and more or less ruined at that point. So you do want to make sure your stock is flat to try this, uh, I think I've heard it called the onion skin technique, uh, but it's a pretty easy way to hold small parts, uh, especially multiple small parts in place. Uh, there's enough wood left in the uh, lattice around them and the uh, pieces holding together here to hold them all in place while you uh, do all your machining operations. And that just about wraps up the tutorial. I uh, hope it was helpful to you. Have a nice day.